Praise the Lord. You are waiting for a spectacular touch of the Lord tonight. I said praise the Lord. The fresh power of the Lord. A fresh touch is coming upon your life. New life. New miracle. New healing. New deliverance. Upon every life tonight in Jesus name. Let's up that hand there. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Great mighty God. Great, loving God, compassionate, merciful God. We come tonight expecting a new touch, a new anointing, a new experience, a new connection with the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we're asking, Lord, tonight, none will be disappointed here in Jesus' name. And online, everywhere. As we get connected, the power of the Lord will be connected with everyone. Lord, we thank you. Let everyone be joyful in your sight today. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. I love your amen. Say that again. Heaven appreciates your amen, a final amen. God bless you. You can sit down. As you notice every night, we are been in the gospel according to St. John. We started from chapter 1 and on the fourth day, chapters 1, 2, and 3. The following day, chapters 4, 5, and 6. And then we've gone through seven, eight, and nine. We've gone through also 10, 11, 12, and 13. Tonight, we're looking at your blessing coming out of chapter 14. Your healing coming out of chapter 15. And the power connection coming out of chapter 16. And then, as we round up, in chapter 17 tonight, something remarkable will happen in your life. And look at the word. We're looking at John chapter 14, verse 12. It says in verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father. It says the same works. Everything he did when he was on earth, he will do for you. Greater than what he did at that time. What does that mean? Greater than what he did at that time. At that time, we didn't hear of HIV AIDS. At that time, we didn't, we didn't hear of some chronic problems today that we hear of and everything even if it's a new sickness a just came coming upon the lives of people greater works will happen tonight and the lord will drive everything away in jesus name look at chapter 15 we're looking at verse 16 chapter 15 reading from verse 16 it says ye I have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Give me a good amen there. The Lord looks at you and the Lord said, it's not just that I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided, Jesus says, before you decided, he decided he was going to have you. And he has you. He was going to cleanse you. And he cleanses you. He was going to turn your life around. He says, you have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. And ordained you. 
that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Your miracle will remain. Your healing will remain. And whatever you get from what Christ did on the cross of Calvary will remain in Jesus' name. That whatsoever he shall ask of the Father in my name, he be give it you. Look at chapter 16 there. In chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 12. It says, I have yet many things to say unto you. <laughs> you know, and sometimes some people come to the crusade and they hear one, two, three, four, five. They say that's enough. And Jesus said, with all I've told you, with all you have seen, with all you have experienced, I have yet many things to say unto you. But she cannot bear them. Now, look at verse 13. In verse 13, how be it in any case, when he, the spirit of truth has come, it will guide you into all truth. Amen. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. And before you get to any danger, that danger will clear out of your way. Now we can rest. Now we can relax. Because anything on the way that will make you stumble, anything on the way that will get you down, anything on the way that will destroy you, it will show you things to come. It will clear them out of your way. Look at chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 20. Chapter 17, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone. I was talking about the disciples, the apostles. He prayed for Peter. And he said, I'm not praying for him alone. Neither pray I for these alone. You see, all those disciples, all those apostles, what did they succeed? I see Peter. On the day of Pentecost, and he declared the word and told them, repent. And about 3,000 souls repented, and they gave themselves to the Lord, and they continued. How did that happen? Jesus prayed for him. And everything he prayed for, that those apostles will have, all of them manifested Everything he prayed for. But look at this, look at this, look at this. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also. Who are they? Them also? Me. Me. He prayed for Peter. He succeeded. He prayed for Peter. And the name of Jesus worked mightily through him. And he said, not only Peter, not only John, not only Andrew, but for them also, we shall believe on me through their word. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you bring yourself into the number that Jesus Christ is praying for. And the prayer of Jesus will cancel sin in your life. The prayer of Jesus will take sickness away from your life. And the prayer of Jesus will knock Satan out of your life in Jesus' name. I'm so glad, I'm so happy that the same way Jesus prayed for Peter, the foremost of the apostles, in that same way Jesus is praying for me. Say it for yourself. I'm glad to let you know that everything that could pin you down, pull you down, drag you down, Jesus has seen it ahead of time and Jesus is praying for you. As we listen to the message, he knows what you need. He knows the burning desire in your heart 
And the Lord is praying for you that tonight you will receive. That's why there's no shadow of doubt in my heart. You are in for blessing, for miracle, for salvation, for deliverance tonight in Jesus' name. He prayed for Lazarus, even Lazarus that was dead and buried and stinking. And God had his prayer. You are not dead yet. Say, I'm not dead yet. Anybody who can say, Amen, is not dead yet. Show me you are not dead yet. Amen. And if he prayed for Lazarus who was dead and he got up, you will get up. Out of the wheelchair, you'll get up. Out of the imprisonment in blindness, you will get up. Tonight is your night. You will not miss the miracle of God in your life. Look at them. Look at what you are talking about one by one. There are four things we are talking about. Number one, the powerful spirit giver. Empowering servants, the servants of the Lord. Number two, he is the pure sustaining vine. Equipping us for fruitfulness in life. Number three, he is the perfect spirit baptizer that fills us, filling us with the spirit of the Lord. Number four, the present sanctifier praying for our sanctification for life. The sanctification is not a temporary thing. It sanctifies us and then it continues and continues all through our lives. Give me a good amen. Look at number one here. Number one is talking about the powerful spirit giver. Empowering the servants of the Lord. It tells us in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14 verse 11. It says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. You see, that's all we have to believe. You don't have to believe I'm a giant, I am strong, I can do, the, I can do that. All you believe is my Lord, my Savior, Jesus, Redeemer, is in the Father. And the Father is in him. All the works he did, all the healings he did, and all the raising of the dead he did, he did it on one account. The Father was in him, and he, he was in the Father. And things have not changed, that's the reason why. The reason God gives us miracle is not because I roll on the ground. It's not because I fast for 40 days. The reason God gives a miracle, your salvation, your healing, your deliverance, is that the Savior is in the Father, and the Father is in the Savior. And as you come and believe that, your miracle of salvation and righteousness is guaranteed in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, whenever Jesus wanted to say something that he didn't want you to ever doubt in your life, it's like, Verily, verily, the sun will rise tomorrow morning. And once you say, Verily, verily, there's no shadow of doubt. It says, Verily, verily. Assuredly, I say unto who? Unto, unto you. You see, the problem is when people hear the words of Christ, they say, okay, he's talking to the church. He's talking to them. He's talking to her. He's talking to him. But the miracle happens when you know he's talking to you. Who is he talking to tonight? That will get salvation. Who is he talking to? That will become righteous. Who is he talking to? That will be healed. Who is he talking to tonight? He's talking to you. Congrats, you are there. 
And what Jesus says unto you must be fulfilled. It will be done. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, not he who believes in himself. There are people going around, I believe myself. I believe myself. That gives you nothing. Even if you believe yourself, what do you have to bring solution to your problem? Can you save yourself? I believe myself. I believe the priest. What can the priest do? I believe in Virgin Mary. What can she do for you? The, what who you believe in is in Christ Jesus is our only savior. I said he's our only savior. It says he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he also do. Those works are manifest in your life today in Jesus name. And then it says and greater works than these shall he do. Uh, somebody comes to the evangelist and he says uh, I want you to pray for me. But before you pray, here is my problem. I want you to tell me whether you have this problem in the Bible or not before you pray. And then we open. What did you say your problem is? This, this, and that. And we say, we cannot find it here. Oh, he said, that's okay. I don't need prayer then. If you cannot find my problem, if you cannot find my secret, if you cannot find my smoking, if you cannot find my local uh, pan wine, if you cannot find that there that Christ set anybody free, bye bye. Don't go yet. Greater works. Greater works. What you never heard of will happen. Deliverance. Miracle, power manifestation that you never read of, you have a peculiar problem, you have a particular miracle. You have something we've never read about, we've never known about, you are going to receive the miracle we never saw, even here tonight in Jesus' name. That's why it says some greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my father. It is done. Look at the next one here. I'm looking at point number two. Point number two is the pure sustaining vine. Equipping us for fruitfulness in life. We're looking at John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, it tells us in verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. I am the true vine. There must be false vines then. The problem we have is that we're going all about looking for vine. And when we see a vine looking like a vine, not knowing it's counterfeit. Not knowing it's false, we grab it. It reminds me of the time of Elisha. Visitors came to visit him. And he sent his servants out, go gather vegetables that we make for these people so that they will eat. And those people went out and they gathered this and this and that, not knowing they were gathering poisonous grass. They thought it was real. And they came back and made for them. As they began to eat, somebody shouted, There is death in the pot. Because they didn't know the true vine. So they went for the false vine. There are people today in their lives in search for salvation. In search for healing, in search for deliverance, 
in search for miracle. They go here, they go there, they go here, they go there, and they think they are found. And Jesus said, all those ones are false. You have come out of the false. Amen. It says, I am the true vine, the one that is true. The one that is dependable. The one that is trustworthy. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Now, when you come to him, what does he do? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, he tells us, he says, Abide in me. And I in you. If I told you, abide in this room. And you have not entered the room yet. You have to enter that room before you can abide in that room. If I told you, abide in this place, you have to come to that place, stay in that place before you can abide. When it says, abide in me, that means you have to come into Christ. Like the Father was in the son, and the son was in the father. You have to allow him to be in you, and you in him. In fact, that's what it says. Look at it. Abide in me, one side, and I in you. And the father was in the son, and the son was in the father. A two-way traffic. A true way penetration. It wants you to do the same thing. It wants you to open your heart that he will come in. And then he wants you to understand that he is in you. And you are in him. Finish every miracle will happen in your life. Look at that, abide in me and I in you. And the branch cannot bear fruit except of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Ye must be connected with him. Ye are the branches so will be converted by him. And ye are the branches. And it says, he that abideth in me and I in him. All the time he speaks about the two sides. He that abideth in me and I in him. When you allow him to live in you. When you allow him to work in you. When you allow him to penetrate you. And to abide in you. And you also abide in him. In his word. There's no way. Miracles will run after you. If you stand up. Miracle will stand up. And attach itself to you. If you sit down. Miracle will sit down with you there. And attach itself to you. Because when you abide in him. And he abides in you. There is a miracle with your name, your number attached to that miracle. Every other person will get their own miracle and you will not miss your miracle. The blind you will see. The lame will walk. The insane will become normal. But whatever is happening there, I was shouting and rejoicing uh, your own miracle will be looking for you to locate you there. You abide in him and he abides in you. The same bring it forth much fruit. Your life will be fruitful. Much fruit. Your wife will be fruitful. Barrenness will vanish away. Your husband will be fruitful. Childlessness will vanish away. The work of your hand will be fruitful. Poverty will vanish away. You abide in him, he abides in you. And he says, the same shall bring forth fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, somebody tell me the rest. You can do nothing. Without me, say it now. 
ye can do nothing but with him, in him, by him, for him. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or your weakness taken away. Emptiness taken away. Sickness taken away. Because in him, for him, by him, through him, all things are possible for you tonight. We're looking at number three here. Point number three. We're looking at the perfect spirit baptizer filling us with the spirit of the Lord. Filling us with the spirit of the Lord. What makes a man do anything? The spirit that's in him. Because as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works, without action is dead. It's the spirit in man. And that's why we're told, whosoever does not have the spirit of Christ is none of his. His spirit must come into you. And when that spirit comes into you, it will move you in the right direction. It will shake everything shakeable out of your life in Jesus' name. That's in spirit that entered and Christ rose from the dead. Every dead thing in your life will come alive again. You know, sometimes somebody just says, I have a problem. You know what? There's some nerves there, tiny thin nerves there that died and because of the death, that's why I can see very well. Somebody says I have a dry cheeks. And that place is, um, you know, it's not functioning well. You know what? There's a ligament there that is not functioning. Dead. Somebody says, I'm dead. Even if they shout, I don't hear anything. You know what? There is a membrane there that is not sensitive anymore. It's dead. Somebody said, when you say, raise up your hand, I cannot raise up my hand. You know what? In the elbow, in the shoulder, there are nerves there, there are muscles there, they are dead. Somebody says that uh, the, the blood is not getting uh, each of my heart. And they say a clutch here, a clutch there. I can hardly breathe. You know what? The blood that ought to be flowing, uh, there's something dead there. As the Lord look at your soul today, every dead thing will come alive. As he looks at your body, he sends his spirit. And his spirit will make everything come alive in Jesus' name. Somebody says, you know, preacher, while you're preaching, I enjoy what you're saying. When you now tell us, we should rise up and pray, I forget everything. I cannot even remember a jot of what you have said. So I just, you know, start saying, God help me. God help me. God help me. When the spirit comes in, it will revive your memory. It will revive your mind. My boy, my girl, my daughter there, tomorrow morning, I'll be saying, I'll be preaching a message the young people that I don't remember I preach any time and you will wake up young people I said you will wake up when I was young like you I had many classmates they even read more than I read and when we go to the exam hall lo and behold 
They have forgotten everything they read in the night. And they are tapping their brain. They are knocking their brain. And they are chewing their pain. And then we come out and they say, you know, they call me, you know, our students, William. How was it? I said it was good. Everything I read, I poured everything there to the lecturer. And, uh, you know, when we came back, my, you know, first degree, they gave me first class. Because somebody dwelt inside me. And everything I need to remember, I remember. Tomorrow is your day. Young people, tomorrow is your day. And corpus, tomorrow is your day. Young professionals, tomorrow is your day. I remember after I came out of university, I, you know, began to teach. And as I was teaching, generally, I don't take any notebook to the class. I taught degree classes, final year degree classes. You know, I, I left my notes at home. And I come over there and, you know, just everything I will remember. That's why I want to connect with you tomorrow. That that's it, that is always forgetting, forgetting, forgetting. I will tell you more of my secret. Do you like to hear my, my secret? I give you the key tomorrow. And in your life, you will never forget again. Now, now we're looking at John chapter 16. Verse 13. In John chapter 16, we're looking at verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit, he comes and he guides you into all truth. The truth of salvation. Until you will never have any shadow of doubt. The truth of your healing. The truth of your deliverance. And the truth of the irresistible power of the Holy Ghost in your life. It will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. You need a better amen there. And he will show you things to come. Now, why wasn't Jesus afraid when he saw all those people that came with lanterns and he saw Judas among them because the spirit had shown him things to come he knew they were coming. He knew Judas was coming. He even spoke about it. Why wasn't Jesus afraid? Why wasn't he fretting and fidgeting when, when he asked them, what are you looking for? And he said, we're looking, he said, here I am. And the people fell down. Why didn't he run away? Why was he bold and courageous? The Spirit had shown him things to come in your life. The Spirit will enter into you today. Things to come. That will make you afraid. Things to come. That will make you to fret. Things to come. That will make that will have made you anemic. That you'll not remember you have any backbone. The Spirit of God comes to you today. And he'll make you to remember. When you get to a crossroad, he'll say, this is the way. Walk here therein. And the decisions of your life will become the decisions of a wise, of a wise well-guided brother or sister in Jesus' name. He will show me. He will show me. He will show me things to come. Before that sickness comes, I show you. You lock your door and say, sickness, here, there's no chance for you. Calamity, here, there's no chance for you. 
your life will be a well-ordered, a well-guided life because you're born of the Spirit. Because you're blessed of the Spirit. Because you're baptized in the Spirit. Tonight, the Spirit of God will visit you. It will enter into you. It will quicken your life and you become stronger than you ever were in your life in Jesus' name. I'm coming to point number four now. Point number four, we're looking at the present sanctifier praying for our sanctification for life. Our sanctifier praying. Thank God is praying for you. Sometimes you meet somebody who appears to be a prayer warrior and you say, my brother, are you praying for me? And he, you know, stops. He cannot answer. He doesn't want to tell a lie and he doesn't want to discourage you. You say, my brother, I'm asking you, my sister, I'm asking you, you're a prayer warrior. Are you praying for me? And he says, honestly, I didn't remember you, but Jesus remembers you. He's praying for you. And anybody, listen to me, anybody Jesus is praying for must succeed in life. He knows your name. He knows your need. He knows what you are asking for. He knows that lack in your life. He knows the sickness. He knows the infirmity. And he knows the weakness of your soul. Lord, arise, I fall. Arise, I fall. Can I ever make it? You will make it. I will make it. Because he is praying for you. Look at this. John chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 9. John chapter 17. Reading from verse 9. It tells us in verse 9. I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. What? I pray not for the world. He said the prayer he was praying in chapter 17. It wasn't for the world. It's when you get to chapter 19, he now prays for the world. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. If you have the world in the world, he also prays for you, but not this one. Forgive them. That's his prayer for you. And tonight, you're forgiven in Jesus' name. It says, but... For them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. They are thine. You belong to the Lord. The Lord is praying for you. He's praying for me. He's praying for me. Sometimes you are tired. And it appears you cannot take any other step. And... But mind your confession, mind your confession. Don't say, I'm so tired, I'm so weak, I cannot take any other step. Just look up, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You'll discover he's praying for you, you will stand. You will hold out to the very end. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, in verse 20 it says, Neither pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. How did we believe? We read the words written by Matthew. How did we believe? We read the words written by John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that to accept whosoever believeth in me shall not perish but have everlasting life. We believed the words of the people who are in Christ. It says, I'm praying for them 
which shall believe on me through their word. The Lord is praying for you tonight. It's by the right hand of the Father now saying, uh, see that young man, that young woman there is going to plead and pray, forgive me, Father, forgive him, forgive her. And tonight, you're forgiven. The Lord, by the right hand side of the Father, is talking to him now. The person there needs salvation. He's been longing. He's been desiring. Father, give him salvation. And it's done. I said it's done. He's looking at the person there. And he's saying, that person is saying, God, help me now. Somebody like me, yesterday got off uh, from the wheelchair. How he bowed to me. And Jesus sees you. And Jesus turns to the Father. And he says, raise that person out of the wheelchair and it is dumb. They brought a child sick, deaf and dumb. And you say, I had the testimony the other day. That person received hearing and the tongue was loose. Lord, do it for my child. And Jesus will say, Father, do it for that child. And that child gets well tonight because neither do I pray for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word he prays for salvation he prays for our sanctification he prays for our strength he prays for our steadfastness and everything you pray for tonight we get into the hands of Jesus. Jesus will present it to the Father and it is done for you. For me. Amen. Tonight is your night. Ex bowed and eyes closed. The first request we have is for your forgiveness. The first request we have is for your salvation. That he will save you and blot out the guilt and the condemnation of your sin. And that's what you want. That's the number one thing you want. You want him to forgive your sin. To give you salvation. Assurance of salvation. The joy of salvation. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. Praise God there. Praise God there. Praise the Lord there. On the right, on the left, at the center there. You want that salvation? Where are you? Where are you? Raise up that hand. Raise it up confidently. Raise it up with assurance that you know the Lord is going to save you tonight. And he's going to forgive you online, anywhere you are. Here is the special moment. Here is the peculiar moment of your sin. Be forgiven anywhere you are online. In a congregation, alone by yourself. In your room by yourself. Raise up that hand. He can see you there. And if you were saved before. You knew the Lord before. But... In the time of carelessness and in the time of prayerlessness and accidentally you have gone back. You have gone down. The Lord is asking. You also raise up your hand now because there is restoration that comes. Raise up your hand. Your time of forgiveness. Your time of restoration. Your time of salvation has come now. As you are raising up your hand, anywhere, everywhere, stand up, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Then the soldiers of the cross and say, yes, Lord, I give my whole heart, my whole soul. I surrender completely unto you. Stand up now, stand up now. Let him see you. Let him recognize that you want salvation with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And that you are not ashamed. I am not ashamed 
of the forgiveness coming from the Lord. I am not ashamed of the salvation coming from the Lord. Even in the open, I can raise up my hand. I can stand up and say, Lord, I want that salvation. I want that forgiveness. As you are standing up there, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. I'm standing up because I mean it. I'm standing up because I want to quit all my sin, all my transgression. I turn away from them. Lord, I repent. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Lord, I trust, I believe that today my sins will be forgiven. I believe that salvation will come to my heart, to my soul. Tell him right there. Tell him right there and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there will be no shadow in your, in your heart. Shadow of doubt. Shadow of unbelief. Am I forgiven? Am I saved? Yes. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is done. I said it is done. For you, it is done. He forgives everyone that calls. He saves everyone who comes. It is done. Keep the hand up and keep on standing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, in the marvelous, merciful name of Jesus, according to your promise, whosoever shall call upon you shall be saved. All these who have raised up their hands, all these who are standing up, I pray your mercy will come to them. Your grace will come to them. Your forgiveness will come to them. And your salvation from sin and from the consequences of sin, that salvation will come right now. Blot out all their transgressions from the book of remembrance. Give them the joy of salvation. The assurance of salvation. The evidence of the experience of salvation. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will they give you a slip to feel or they might feel it for you if you are not able to write after that your miracle prayer is coming your way miracle today healing today deliverance today in every life in Jesus name a moderating of us here to come now and help us at this time Congratulations for this wise decision. The counselors are there. Give them your phone number, the correct address of your place of abode or residence. Counselors, go all around. To the back of the hole, all over the field. Ensure you are checking their names and their details. Those online, you also need to sign in on the details on the screen on television, as it may be, so that you can forward it to the link. 
counselors, let's pray all about all our workers and people that are to counsel the people. Spread all around. Keep doing it. Write fast and legible and very clean and clear. Give them details of an area that you can be, be visited. Let's do it fast. And the leaders who are leading the team, make sure the parcel from our Father in the Lord is added to the, to the giving to those who are making this decision. Give them the parcel as you write their names in the decision slip. Let's do it fast and do it neat. And those of us that have not stand up, while we are waiting, we keep praying and talking to the Lord that he will visit us. That you will receive his intervention. Counselors, we are waiting for you. All of us. Going, going into the deep of the hole, the field. If you are not with anybody, find somebody. Move into the tents there. Do it fast. Give them your details. Your complete telephone number. Let's move into the field and give the people the decision slip. Get them the materials that they need. The special package is with you. Give them. That is from the man of God, the convener of the GCK. There are riches of God's blessing that will help you stand on your feet for the Lord. Counsel us. Let's do it fast, sharp, and quick. Those online, send in your names and your details on television. You can see the link. Fill it up as you sign in. And forward it to the appropriate place. The leaders leading the team of the counselors. Once you are through, let's have a signal from you so that we can know how far you have gone. There are people working with forms. Go to the back there. If you have not seen anybody, rush to the back. There are people all over the hole, or the field rather. And those of us that are waiting, keep praying. Well, the counselors are counseling the people. There is a miracle with your name attached to. Keep praying. God will give you all that miracle. Counsel us. If you are true, raise up your hand or wave the flag or whatever means you are having for the indication. Let's be fast. You are true, wave at me. 
in your area from the left side of my the right side of my the field. Those of you that are online, congratulations. Fill the form. Do it sharp and fast. Those on television, copy those links and contacts. Send it through your phone or your, your applications to the, the link. Do that and still keep praying after that online. Don't go away. God will visit you yet again. And for those listening on radio, send in your name, your location to this number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I take the number again. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. If you don't have writing material, those listening on radio, look for one. We still give you the number very soon. Counselors, we are waiting for you. If you are done, let's see your hands up. Wave at me in the front here. Yes, I can see them waving at me. They are all over here. Right hand side of the, the, whole, the, the field. Are you through? Yes, I've not seen the white flag by the right side. They are true in the front side. Those by the left side behind the choir tents. Can I see your flag? At my right hand side. Cancel us if you are true. Let's do that very fast. Those online sending your details. For those watching on television and social media, we see the link on your screen, fill in the form so that we can attend to you and help you grow. Yes, those by my right hand side, let me see your flag. Yes, they are true. They are true. Let me see those by my left. These are the only ones remaining. They are true, front, right, left. Let me see. Let me have an indication from the left hand side of the field. I see the choir members there. Wave at me if you are done. All right. Get set for your miracle. Get set for your miracle. Stand up. Praise the Lord. My miracle has arrived. Say it for yourself. My miracle will locate me here where I am. It's coming your way right now. Raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have your challenge, your healing, definite. Opening of blind eyes, definite. The lame rising and walking, definite. Power in your life. Amen. Amen. Raise up that hand, lay the other hand over you have the challenge, Father. The mighty name of Jesus. We know. That the miracles, the healing, deliverances for your people, they are all guaranteed tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray 
Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness, be delivered in Jesus' name. Neck problem, you couldn't turn the neck, steep, goiter, whatever, be healed in Jesus' name. Every form of swelling in your body, tummy, and ear, elephantiasis, whatever, any kind of swelling there, normal, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those who are blind or they have deep my sight, Lord, touch their eyesight right now. Brighten their vision. Take the cataract, the glaucoma, take everything away in Jesus' name. And the degeneration of the, of the retina. Lord, do a creative miracle. Amen. And take that degeneration away and heal their eyes completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Leprosy and skin disease. The Lord touch you right now. Amen. Your leprosy, your skin disease be cleared off instantaneously. Is your blood stop there right now? That the blood that has been coming, gushing out will come to an end today in Jesus' name. Long-standing sickness, incurable disease, cancer, ulcer, whatever eternal sickness in the kidney, in the lungs, anywhere, be healed in Jesus' name. Pile, you're healed in Jesus' name. Arthritis, lameness, paralysis, polio. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those who have been lying down, helpless, rise up and walk. Lord, I pray that everywhere, to the right, to the left, to the back, to the front, to the center, and beyond the walls there and online everywhere, miracles, healings, deliverances, everywhere in Jesus' name. It is done. It is confirmed. Everyone receive and demonstrate your healing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 